Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play Mega Man 4 for the Game Boy. And in the last video, we started going through Dr. Wily's spaceship, and we fought, we, we fought a bunch of bosses. We fought the Dock Tower, as the Mega Man homepage calls it. And the eyes, those two battles with the eyes that attacked us with other eyes. And now we are here in the teleport hatch room, also known as the boss rush room. And as soon as we go up here, we're going to face Toad Man. By going counterclockwise from top left to top right, you'll have a good idea. What am I doing? You'll have a good idea of how the order is is pretty much going to be almost the same way that we did it the first time around. So, that was Toad Man. If we go top if we go counterclockwise from top left all the way to the second hatch in the middle, we will make our way to Crystal Man. Now, if you go right from Crystal Man, you'll have Charge Man in order to face Napalm Man after Crystal, you have to go to the top right after the second middle and then work your way down from there. So it's almost as simple as Mega Man 8 for the Sony PlayStation 1, but it throws a bit of a curveball in the pattern there, and you just kind of have to watch out for it. Thankfully, it's pretty easy to figure out. And now, by equipping Toad Man... I should be able to beat Bright Man. And if I could do this without getting hit a whole lot, I should be able to get Nate Gain on health. That's the plan anyway. And what do you know, I got Nate Gain on health. Because I wasn't at one unit left by the time I was done. Though, I would have liked to have gone to full health anyway. Well, I'll have a chance here against Pharaoh Man. As always, use Bright Man, and you should be able to take him out. And if you know what you're doing... You should take him out with very little effort. Just wait for him to stop flashing before you hit him again. And now, I need to use a weapon can. If I can somehow use it. There we go. And now, I can use Pharaoh Shot. I should have waited until after I entered the teleport hatch to do that. Oh, well, what are you going to do? And with the Pharaoh sh shot, it's really easy to tank hits on Ringman. I just now found that out. What's next? Ringman, Crystal Man. I can do this one. And now he's going to jump around like he usually does. And shoot the crystals. Again, like he always does. Waited a little bit, so that way I can ensure that I had the shot. And now, from here, we need to go up to the top right corner if we want to face Napalm Man with the crystal shot. With the crystal eye. And if I could do this right, very little effort. I really did not waste any of my weapon there. That was awesome. And now I need to use Napalm on Stone Man, which is going to be in the center right hatch here. 
Yes, I know you're going to do this, but you just keep on doing it. Get yourself pulled back together. Did not want to take that damage, but I'll tolerate that because I can get back to full health really easily. And now it's time for the other Robot Master that I can beat with the Mega Buster, Charge Man. I mean, just like with Toad Man, you're better off. And I was trying to slide there and I couldn't do it. I need to use a health can, I need to use an energy can, and stat. Well, that was interesting. And now we have five big weapons pickups that I want to use to refill things with. Um, I'm pretty good on Ballad Cracker. I'm pretty good on Stone. Let's go ahead and refill Napalm, Pharaoh, Ring. Let's go ahead and do Crystal. I don't really want to do... I don't see myself using Bright Man, so let's go ahead and just use the rest on Napalm. And once we get in here, we'll face Dr. Wily proper after a brief little cutscene. really love what Mega Man 4 did with the presentation. And now for the three-part Dr. Wily fight. For the first part, we equip Stone Man. And we stay underneath this thing. Jump straight up. That way we can always get two hits with Stone Man's weapon every single time. Assuming that the... that we're in the air. And... we shoot... the Stone Man weapon that way. And this stays in the center like it's supposed to. Now... I usually keep seeing the left one here for some reason. The left fist will always shoot debris or punch, but the right one can also do it too. If you if you know where the if you know what you're doing, you can easily figure this out. If this circle moves to the left, get to the right so the left hand doesn't hit you. If the circle moves to the right, move to the left so that the right hand doesn't hit you. If it smacks the ground, watch out for the Bree. If it moves straight forward, just stay away. And now it's time for this thing. This thing will open its mouth and try to suck us in. That's when you want to get some ballad crackers in. Move back and forth to avoid these star bar burst shots. And after the sixth one, go all the way to the right Keep shooting the Mega Buster. Just keep shooting lemons. This thing will just miss you. Because if you don't keep doing that, you will get hit by the head of this robot. Pretty easy to figure this out. And of course, you probably just have to mess around to avoid, find out how to avoid getting hit with the head. I know I did. Sometimes you can get two shots in there, sometimes you can get three. It just depends on how quick you are with the jumping and the shooting. And now we'll just need to do this one more time. All right. 
And now... For the third phase. Here's how best to beat it. Stay all the way to the left. Dr. Wally will disappear. Watch the sky. When he shows back up, be ready to slide to the right. That way you can avoid the bomb. When he makes his way to the right after the second bomb, that's when you want to stay just off of center and just throw ballad crackers at him. Preferably just right of center. Wily, I like you as a villain, but you did not think this through. Beat is also a good weapon, as is the Pharaoh shot. I think you can shoot it upwards. Once you beat this phase, Wily gets away. And now it's time to escape. Yes, we actually see a cutscene of Mega Man trying to escape the spaceship because, once again, we're on a spaceship. Obviously, we need to get out because, for some reason, as of late, every time we beat Wily, his lair always seems to explode for some reason. And this one is no exception. We power through all the walls with the Mega Buster, but we reach a dead end. And this one is rather heavily fortified. And then Ballad shows up. Ballad! Why are you here? Stop, Ballad! You're badly injured! I know, Mega Man. After our battle, I realized that I was wrong. This is all I can do for you now. Goodbye. Ballad! Ballad sacrifices himself to blow up the wall and the outermost layer of the ship so we can get out and just get sucked out through the vacuum of space, which is a good thing for Mega Man and bad for a human because Mega Man can breathe in space. And we are out of here. Thankfully, Rush keeps us from being stranded and floating around in zero gravity as the spaceship explodes with a sad face on the skull because this sometimes happens with enemy wares when they get destroyed or blowed up in Mega Man, Mega Man or Nintendo games for some reason. And we get a roll call of the Robot Masters before we see the credits. And that's it. That is Mega Man 4 for the Game Boy. This one has its challenges, but it didn't drive me super nuts like Mega Man 3 did. It's not like I spent six tries on Dustman stage here like I did in the last game. I think the hardest part was Crystal Man stage. You just kind of have to get used to getting around in that stage. But other than that, the rest of the game wasn't... I wouldn't say it was like... How do I put it? The rest of the game was challenging, but not as challenging as Crystal Man, thankfully. <laughs> Where the boss was more... Was easier than the stage was. I might as well go ahead and go with the mini review now. The, you kind of know what to expect with Mega Man 4 at this point if you've been paying attention to my mini reviews for the Game Boy Mega Man games. I mean, if you played 1, 2, and 3, it's not going to be much different. So, this one does seem a little more polished than even 3 was. 
and I think they would polish it just a little bit more for five. Uh, graphics, they are pretty much going to be what you expect from a Mega Man game on the Game Boy. So is the sound and the music. Capcom did well on both the graphics and Sonic's fronts. Gameplay, if you played the first three Game Boy games, you know what to expect here. I do find it interesting that they actually experiment with stuff, such as making it so that you had to recharge everything fully through Dr. Light's lab, instead of just going between stages like to refill everything like you always did. No, you actually had to refill stuff and you could easily enter a stage without everything filled up and not know it. I think that's kind of more of a nitpick than an actual miss for me. Because I did get used to that. But it is worth mentioning. Other than that, everything's pretty responsive. Mega Man shoots when you want him to, jumps when you want him to, kinda. You still have to figure some things out as far as the challenge goes. But it can be done and replay value you'll probably won't have much of a reason to pick this back up again once you beat it but it's still a fun game to have around it's still a fun game to have in the collection I might as well just go ahead and mention it now if you're gonna get one Game Boy game that's a Mega Man game that's just the four shades of black if you can't not black at all a shade of black on a pea soup green monitor with a liquid crystal display. You might as well go ahead and make it this one. Though, five is pretty good too. I'm kind of torn between four and five. Four because this is the most polished at the retread games of the series, which is kind of a weird way of putting it, but the ones that borrow from the NES games heavily, of the four that do that, this is the most polished one. 5 just kind of went and did its own thing while still sticking to the formula. And, yeah, you might as well just go ahead and go get this game. And there's no credits. I keep forgetting that the Game Boy games do not have credits. You just get the Robot Master Roll Call and you get Ballad at the end. You don't get Wily because you just saw him. And... Then you just get this one screen saying, hey, thanks for playing. As I was saying, you might as well just go ahead and get this game. It's of the four, as I said before, as of, of the four games that borrow from the NES games, this one's the most polished. It's still going to have its fair share of difficulties, just like 3 did when... Minakuchi Engineering, I want to believe that's the name of the developer that this was outsourced to, took the reins again after what happened with Mega Man 2 on Game Boy. This game is still going to have its fair share of challenges, but it's this game is done pretty darn well. I like the fact that you have cutscenes when in the Wily stages. Like when you're... Like when you see Mega Man... Sh shoot his arm cannon, his Mega Buster, at the cannons of the Wily Fortress and also seeing the giant Dr. Wily robot that you fight Wily in for the first two phases of his battle. Those were pretty nifty. I can understand that they didn't have, an, have enough space to put in more, but those were pretty good. I do have to admit Definitely pick this one up. And that's pretty much all I can say about Mega Man 4 for the Game Boy. This has been Let's Play Mega Man 4 for Game Boy. Hopefully you enjoyed this as much as I did. Maybe a little bit more. And hopefully I'll be back with another game. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be bad. Maybe it'll be somewhere in between, who knows. Yes, I pressed the print screen button just to do this for my Twitter thread of games I beat for the internet for the given year. I am not ashamed to admit that. And this has been Let's Play, Mega Man X4. This is Prince Watercrest. Take care. Stay safe. 
Thanks for watching and see you guys later.